So I'm speaking today to uh, Mr. Dominic Ng, a former Adun in the Sarat State Assembly. Uh, he is also the president of SAPA, an NGO based in Sarawak, and they're actively promoting uh, uh, self-determination for the people of Sarawak. So Dominic, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to me. Uh, yes. As I mentioned to you earlier, I'm trying to speak to as many people as possible uh, who are interested in this issue of uh, Malaysia Agreement and the related issue of autonomy for uh, North Borneo, Sabah uh, and Sarawak. So we'll start off by maybe you introducing uh, uh, or provide a summary of what SAPA is about. I think a lot of people outside Sarawak may not know what SAPA is about. Okay. Thank you, uh, Professor James Chin. Now, uh, SAPA stands for Sarawak Association for People's Aspiration. And basically, we are a human rights uh, association registered. Okay, uh, big word there, registered. Uh, uh, we, shortly after our registration in 2013, when we started organizing a few seminars on uh, MA63, we were promptly deregistered, okay, for being a threat to the security of Malaysia, among other things. And uh, so I, I was a lawyer since then. Uh, I took up a case, so we brought it to the High Court, and it went all the way to the Federal Court uh, to cut the short, uh, story short. We won our right to be registered as a human rights association fighting for the rights of Israel. So it doesn't come easy, okay? So we're very proud to be duly recognized as a properly registered association fighting not only for the rights of Sarawakians, okay? We are actually going further than that. We're going the whole way, self-determination, including independence. Um, okay, I, I used to be a politician, okay? And you have introduced me before, I was with the PKR before. I was their first state assemblyman for Padungan. And uh, we have been talking about Sarawak rights for donkey years. It is only recently that the situation has come about that we can talk about it openly without being our association with deregistered or people being locked up or being arrested. Only recently has the, uh, the atmosphere in Malaysia lightened up to allow uh, a more free flow of our expressions. And all these are done very, uh, what we call, uh, civilly, okay? Now, uh, SAPA is now dedicated to pursuing legally, legally, uh, whatever we can get. And at the end of the day, if that is possible, we want an independence for Sarawak. All right, can, can I just cut in quickly? And uh, you mentioned the, the, the key word independence. I'm just wondering, legally speaking, what are the available routes uh, given the fact that uh, many people uh, in the legal field have argued that succession from Malaysia is not possible? Okay. Uh, I have actually uh, acquired, accumulated a whole team of about 17 lawyers. Okay. Lawyers who uh, some of them are very well versed in constitution, MS history, and so on. And we are going seriously into the whole matter. Now, we are not talking about secession. I mean, there is a huge difference when talking about seceding, which is, by the way, uh, sedition, seditious in Malaysia. But independence for Sarawak is a totally different ballgame. Okay, can you, separate, can you separate the two legally and, and help our our viewers understand Certainly. the difference between uh, breaking away and, and seeking independence? And, and yes, okay. Seeking independence is, uh, is a basic right of any uh, body of people, okay, who were previously non-self-governing, but later, I mean, they were colonies, basically, we were colonized by Great Britain. So colonies who, which were allowed to become independent, uh, pursuant to uh, 
general uh, assembly resolution 1514, 1541, and, uh, and so on. Okay, so those are legal rights. And right now, our main, uh, what we call a type, is that according to international law, Sarawak and Sabah, for that matter, will never properly be colonized. You mean Sarawak and North Borneo? So we're not talking about Sarawak and North Borneo, yes. Okay. Although North Borneo has a different historical background, which I'm not very uh, versed with, uh, I would uh, concentrate on the case of Sarawak, although we're hoping that Sabah or North Borneo, okay, eventually will form their own team to look seriously into this matter. We're still talking with all groups of people. Okay. Now, so we are telling everybody, we're not talking about cessation. We are talking about seeking the independence of Sarawak. And I'd like to remind those who are not familiar with the history of Sarawak. Sarawak was an independent nation for 100 years under the Raja Brooks from 1841 to 1941. Thank you very much. Okay. We were an independent, recognized by the UK and recognized by the United States. Okay. All right, all right. So put, put, we put in that. As, I'm sorry, but I, I do not want to uh, go into all the detail. But uh, strictly speaking, just stick to the legal side first. If that is your argument, that your 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 first argument is based on the uh, the the UN uh, declaration on on the rights of people to self determination. If you're going to litigate based on international law, then what is the forum available to you? Okay, that is of course not an easy issue. Okay, the International Court of Justice is one. Although we have other people who thought that we should go back to the uh, to the United Kingdom, okay, under uh, a so-called uh, arbitration. This is a line that is uh, promoted by people like uh, Zainal Azamain. Okay, the International Court of Justice. Uh, there is of course a problem about. Uh, uh, in the sense that you can only access ICJ if the litigating parties agree to it. We are, of course, assuming that the Federation of Malaya, which was renamed the Federation of Malaysia, will never agree to it. Okay. Now, that was difficult in the years gone by. But since then, since 2019, as a result of the Chagos case, Okay, the whole scenario has changed. So we're talking about recent international law as a result of the Chagos case have changed. All right, so just, just words, give our listeners a summary of why the Chagos case is related to the Sarawak case. Okay, now in the case of Chagos, the island of Chagos, uh, when Mauritius uh, was gaining its independence at that time, Mauritius was a colony like Sarawak and Sabah of Great Britain. And when they were about to be given its independence, Great Britain decided to take away the island of Chagos away from the uh, territory of uh, Mauritius and chase away all the thousands of Chagosians who were uh, on that island. Okay? And they decided to go into an agreement with Mauritius. At that time, Mauritius was still not an independent nation, it was still a colony. The case of the Chagos in the in, in, uh, international courts was that a colony do not have the capacity to go into a international agreement with another sovereign state, because at that time, it doesn't have its own sovereignty. So to make it short, at that time, when uh, Chag uh, Mauritius agreed with United Kingdom, to take away the Chagos Islands, it was as a result of an uh, uh, agreement that was not validly entered into. Because so the people other... of Chagos do not have mm. the sovereignty to negotiate on behalf of themselves because they were still colonial people. Was still now colonial. now I, I understand that. So basically the legal argument taken from what you, you understand by the Chagos case uh, I need okay. to remind uh, viewers that the Chagos case 
uh, is actually not court ruling, it's advisory opinion as first thing. That's true. Okay, so, so basically the argument is that uh, Sabah and Sarawak, the process of bringing up the federation is flawed because the people of Sabah and North, uh, sorry, the people of Sarawak and North Borneo at that time were in no position to talk about either entering or creating a new federation because they were still under the rule of the British. And they were still the, colonial powers. Yes. I mean, they were still colonists, yes, that's sure. right. So they were, so in other words, the whole process put forward by the Malayan and the British government, uh, here I'm mm -hmm. talking basically about the Cobalt process was essentially a manipulated process by yes. the colonial authorities. And secondly, that the people, even if they were consulted, they did not have the, the what do you call it, the authority to negotiate because they were under the, the colonial rule. Uh, more than that, you see, uh, when we were in the process, supposedly in the process of decolonization, there must be free and informed will, okay? The Cobalt Commission was just a charade. Mm. It was only meant to whitewash what was an, uh, already a foregone conclusion. What they did was they go throughout Sarawak and Sabah and talk to about 6,000 people at most, uh, about 3,000 in Sarawak and 3,000 in Sabah. And they say, and they came to the conclusion that the people of Sarawak and Sabah agreed by a two to uh, two thirds majority to uh, join Malaysia. That was not correct. Actually, it's not talking about joining Malaysia, but forming Malaysia at that time. In the process, what actually happened was that we did not really form Malaysia per se. There was an agreement, but that agreement is not valid. It was now and void from the beginning. We were actually taken into an existing federation of Malaysia, which was renamed the Federation of Malaysia. So in other words, we were never properly decolonized according to international law. That is our way of looking at it. Okay, right well, well then playing the devil's advocate again, the question I ask is that, uh, again, because this mm -hmm. thing has not been litigated, it's all legal opinion. You're, you're arguing from, from a, le a legal standpoint of view. The question comes back to where is the forum that this can be litigated upon? If, if the ICJ, obviously the route, as you mentioned, is not available because ICJ is based on the notion of states uh, agreeing to be to, to go and appear with ICJ. And obviously mm -hmm. the UN recognized uh, the Federation of Malaysia as basically Putrajaya. Uh, not Kuching of Kata Kinabalu. So if the ICJ route is not available, then, then where is the forum? Where is the legal forum that you can bring this argument to? Before we go to that, actually, we have not totally dismissed the route of the ICJ. Okay? Because the Chagos case clearly was England, UK, totally disagree to go to I, uh, ICJ. But later, as a result of support from about 30 states in the uh, independent nations, it went through the United Nations to the ICJ. Again, it's advisory, but that route is still possible if you have friendly nations who are prepared to champion your cause. Okay, that is still not dead in that sense. Now, uh, speaking as a lawyer, okay, we always talk about exhausting all our remedies. That means that the first uh, way would be to refer this case, I mean, in other words, AMA 63, okay, to the Federal Court of the Federation of Malaysia, uh, Malaysia, because that is the, there is, according to the Constitution of the Federation of Malaysia, there is such a route, going straight from the High Court instruction. Uh, I, I understand, but the Federal Court in Malaysia is built on the system where they will only answer a constitutional question. So what is the constitutional excellent. question that you wanted to ask them? Okay, the constitutional question would be, basically, uh, we are still formulating our statement of claim, by the way. Uh, and there are two routes, one of which is using the uh, writ, writ action. The second one is actually by originating summons. That, these are court processes in uh, yeah. Malaysia. Okay, so by an OS, by a writ, you can go straight to the federation, federal court, but you have to start in uh, the high court of uh, Bonio. Mm. By an OS, you can go straight to the, uh, to the issues at hand. Now, our main point, you must understand that we are still formulating. And one of the reasons why we have 
to uh, practically pull back our suit was because Petronas has sued, uh, has started the action earlier, sued the Sarawak government, then it withdrew the case. And thereafter, when Sarawak government uh, passed the, the oil mining ordinance and started using the OMO to, to uh, collect another 5% tax from Petronas, Petronas jumped up and started yet another suit. And the Sarawak government has also sued Petronas in order to get that extra 5% under the OMO. OMO, uh, okay, is the Sarawak's uh, answer to circumvent the Petroleum Development Act. So all these issues which are going before the court now and any uh, decisions by the court, it's already gone to the court of appeal, uh, even on preliminary points. Uh, we believe that that will have a bearing on our ultimate suit. So we're actually adjusting our suit as we go along. Because right now we cannot uh, sue the federal government, that is our intention, uh, on their own while cases are ongoing. Because a lot of the issues that we're going to litigate will be uh, covered by this. So right. we are still working and... Sure. Yes. But let, let, let me again, uh, playing the devil's advocate, one of the primarily, uh, what do you call it, initial step is that you must show that you have a local standard. One of the issues with the bonanization case that was filed by two individuals in Sabah was that they never took off the ground because the courts argued that they do not have the local standard to stand for that case. And 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 uh, most uh, of the legal opinion I've spoken to, again, because they saw, well, in fact, there's no cases directly uh, related to MS-63, so there was no case law. But most of the lawyers I've spoken to argue that the only people with clear local standard is actually the state Sorry. government of, of Sabah or the state government of Sarawak to litigate on, on, right. on different aspects of MS-63. You can't litigate on, on MS-63 directly, as you mentioned. So my question is that, how are you going to argue that you, uh, Sapa or any of the groups uh, that you associate with, have the local standard to, to, to litigate on this issue? Now, there is, of course, a representative action which we are contemplating. So that means that we have to have sufficient number of Sarawakians from all levels, from all races, from all divisions and so on to be capable of representing the whole of Sarawak. Okay? It's by way of representative action. And the issue of local standard, I beg to defer. Okay? There are at least two cases, Fu Fang Chong and that of uh, Lingi. Lingi. Okay? Both are Saba cases and both are decisions of uh, Dato, uh, our former CJSS, uh, David Wong. And I beg to defer because I don't believe that uh, the, the uh, issue of what we call local standard is dead. It, it's not. Uh, no, no, I, I didn't say it's dead. What I'm saying is that what is the argument, you know, to show that you have, you have it. That, that, the that's what I'm standard. asking you. Yes, yes. Most opinions seems to say that it is quite a difficult thing to overcome. I agree with that. Mm. So by using representative action, broad enough to represent the, the term Sarawakians, okay? So we intend to go, I mean, this is part of our action, okay? To get Sarawakians from all walks of life, from all divisions, we've got 10 divisions, from all races and so on, broad enough to represent the people of Sarawak, okay? And of course, when we take this kind of action, we will have to bring the Sarawak government in as a party. So I'm sure eventually that issue of local standard will become academic in the sense of the word. Because the issue is too important to throw, I mean, to sidestep using a technicality. That's why we have confidence that we will overcome that. When then, the, then the obvious question to ask is that, why are you not doing this with uh, groups in Sabah who are also interested in seeking uh, maximum autonomy or self-determination for Sabah? Okay. You know that we have not closed any doors. We're still open and we're still talking to groups in uh, Sabah. And in fact, we're still encouraging them to form their own legal team because I cannot speak for them. And mm. of course, uh, they have a lot of people, they have a lot of champions, but as you are away, 
most of them seem to be talking about greater autonomy. Okay? We believe that uh, greater autonomy, while it is a very good objective, okay, we're not going to go anywhere. Uh, we have already been in this experiment called the Federation of Malaysia for the last almost 60 years now. Okay? How far have we gone down the road? You look at, I'm now speaking as, as a Sarakin. You look at countries which were at that time supposed to be forming the Federation of Malaysia. Brunei, Singapore, okay? There was, uh, Singapore was already in and then they, they left by mutual agreement. It was kicked out or whatever, okay? Look at what have happened to them. Singapore has nothing except Singaporeans in the sense that they've got no oil, they've got no land, okay? Brunei. Not much people, they have oil. Sarawak, we have everything. We have oil, we have gas, we have land, we have Sarawakans. And yet, compared to Singapore and Brunei right now, we are the worst when we should be the best. So I'm saying, I'm saying that if Singapore can do it, if Brunei can do it, why can't Sarawak and Sabah for that matter do it? Now, you must understand, there are many Sarawakians who find that they cannot find a living in Sarawak and they have to leave for overseas. There are hundreds of thousands of Sarawakians who were obligated to find their living elsewhere. People are saying that we don't have talents. I'm saying that we have lots of talents and those talents are a lot of them overseas. I don't think there's any problems about getting you a for one, okay? If Sarawak can be independent, <laughs> well, 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 right, okay? Uh, uh, so many of us, okay? We are talking about professionals. We're not talking about... Uh, no, no, that, 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 that is fine, Dominic. I understand where, where the, all these things are coming from. But what I'm interested in is, 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 you know, what is right in front of us, in other words, you know, what is available legally and if the international law is a difficult uh, thing to start. I'm working on the assumption that you're still willing to, to litigate under domestic law as well. So in other words, uh, from what you are suggesting, you, are, you and your organizations and your supporters are actually looking at dual track. One is the international track uh, because of the example given by the Chagos case. And under yeah. domestic law, you're thinking of litigating uh, uh, you know, on the issue of uh, the Malaysia agreement, but you are just waiting for clarification from the Petronas case and several yes. other cases. Is that what you're saying? Am, am I hearing you correctly? That's correct. We are not, you see, the, the issue is not a, a simple open and shut case. While we are talking about the Malaysian agreement per se, M83 in short, okay? Actually, there's a lot of other laws, a lot of other issues that, are, that go hand in hand. So it's a rather, in fact, the Chagos case, okay, which took, uh, by the way, over 50 years to get to where they are right now, okay, it's new, still not, not ending was a comparatively simpler case to that of ours. Sure, sure. Okay. Um, so, time is running out, so let, let me ask you the, the, the ultimate question. Um, since uh, the legal route appears to be a long drawn out process with many twists and turns like all uh, difficult legal cases, what about the counter argument that this is essentially a political issue that maybe people of Sabah and Surat to devote their energy and time to try to work up a new set of federal state relationships rather than trying to, to fight them legally, which will take years and years. It may be a political solution. It's a much easier thing to do with. How would you answer that? Okay. Certainly, it is not just a legal solution. Okay. Politics play a very major role. And right now, uh, a few political parties are with us. Okay. If not, in front, they're at least supporting us from the back. Uh, the political parties in front would be, of course, uh, PBK, Parti Bumi Kiangalang, STAR, State Reform Party, which has changed its name to uh, Party Inspiracy, okay, among others, and there's movements like SOS. So basically, there is a very diverse and broad spectrum group of Sarawakians that are fighting seriously for it. And we are giving them the legal means of doing it. We are part and parcel of a whole, 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 whole a campaign. Now, 
the most important part is that is what I'm dedicating myself to, which is the legal uh, fight. Not only that, I would also like to form the legal basis for uh, Sarawak achieving its independence. Because you know Sarawakians, basically Sabahans are like that. They are fearful of action taken by the federal government, you know, locking up, arresting all our people, all our leaders and so on, because we are talking about something that is seditious or something that is against the law. So part of my duties as a lawyer and leading the team would be to formulate the legal way. We're talking about legal and legitimate way of seeking what we ultimately want to seek. So that is, in that sense of the word, when you ask me the question of cessation, straight away, uh, I'm telling you, we are not talking about cessation because cessation is illegal. We're talking about independence, that cannot be illegal. For that, for, for that matter. On the basis now, of, of, the, of the UN yeah. rule on self-determination, I mean, that's where you are coming from. I just want to make it clear, right? Uh, so, in that sense of the word, the ultimate answer will come from many aspects. Now, um, political as well as legal. The, there must be a concerted action from people of Sarawak from all walks of life. Right now, while we seem to be uh, a, a, a vocal, uh, perhaps uh, a very vocal minority in the sense that advocating for independence, there is, I think you understand, a very subtle undercurrent of people, of Sarawakians across the board, across the racial background, across the Sarawak, who are quite sick and tired of being taken for a right by the federal government. Government has changed, okay, from BN to Pakatan Harapan, now it's PN. Okay, the latest change in the last two years. Okay, none of these federal governments will ever deliver to Sarawak and Sabah what we ought to have. So right now, the question we are, we are going to uh, propose to Sarawakians, why are we going after the fighting for something which is a lost cause in the sense that Malaysia, the Federation of Malaysia as it is now, will never treat Sarawak and Sabah equally fairly. Okay? So we are now talking about something that ought to have been done right from the beginning. Of course, there are issues like the passage of time. Okay? Of course, there will be another issue which maybe you have not raised yet. It's already 50 years. Isn't that a lot of water under the bridge? Well, Chagos case was a clear example. 50 plus years, and right now we're still fighting. I mean, Chagos, Mauritius, of course, as a nation, is fighting for the, the Chagosians. So I don't think passage of time, okay, is, uh, is going to be a problem in the sense that when we were never given the right to self-determination, which is, by the way, and self-government, which is actually something that was given to us under the nine cardinal principles uh, given to us, granted to us by the Rajas before the left Sarawak. Okay. Uh, article number, point number eight was actually self-government, self-determination. We were never granted that. So there is a whole gamut of legal, uh, political, uh, international conventions which we can depend and fall back upon to push to uh, what we call to push for our our cause. Now, I'm hoping that the people of Sabah, okay, will come online too, because we share not only geographical uh, neighbors, we share the same fate under the Federation of Malaysia. So, if indeed the Sabahans can get themselves together. Uh, and form a, a dedicated team. Ensure, uh, coming from Sarawak and Sabah, we work together as a team. We can really achieve what we wanted. Now, for your information, the independence we are seeking doesn't mean it will be the end of Malaysia. Let me, do you, do you want me to explain that? Sure, go ahead. Okay. The Sarawak independence that we are talking about, we want to be an independent nation. 
Okay, because we were never given the right to serve determination in the first instance. Now, we still do not mind being in a kind of confederation with the Federation of Malaya, like for example, the European Union, where they are independent sovereign nations or sovereign states, but under a European Union, which takes care of their defense, okay, and perhaps the foreign, foreign policy, okay? But each uh, sovereign state within the European Union continues to be uh, responsible for the entire state, so nation state in itself, okay? So in other words, we want what belongs to us. Independence actually uh, actually guaranteed to us, but what we achieved was so-called independence within the Federation of Malaysia, which was not an independence. Oh. So the independence I'm seeking, okay, Sarawak being a sovereign state, sovereign nation, does not mean that Malaysia will necessarily end because we can still come together again as was promoted okay, by the SUPP during those years. You were saying, let us become independent first. After that, we make our own determination. How do you want to form Malaysia? Should the people of Sarawak still want to retain Malaysia? So you must understand, of course, some people will talk about total full independence. I don't see a total full independence for Sarawak and Sabah for that matter will mean that Sarawak, Malaysia will cease to exist. I, I don't think so. Okay, so in that sense of the word, uh, I'm trying to clarify that issue. Uh, I am patriotic to Sarawak. And my patriotism to Malaysia, okay, is also indisputable, indisputable because I was the only person who was fighting for Malaysia Day's recognition for almost 10 years before it became recognized, okay? Now, you cannot fault me for being a Sarawakian, because that is where I'm born. I am in Malaysia now as a nation, but I am very unhappy. All Sarawakians are very unhappy with the Federation of Malaysia, because the Federation of Malaysia never delivered on its promises is solemn promises under Malaysian agreement, under whatever things we're talking about. So right now we're talking about getting what we ought to have. And if we must become independent first before we can get it, I think we should pursue it. Is that okay? All right. Yeah. I'm sorry, Dominic, uh, but time has run out. Um, I do not want to you know, keep going on and on. I think it's important that uh, in, especially in today's social media age, uh, it's important we, to get the point across straight so that you know uh, the shorter the video is the more people watch it so thank you